All right, hey guys, welcome to another Train Simulator 2020 video. Today uh, we've got Cedar Side Turn Part Two, which I've been trying to get put together for a while, but I had a little problem with the skins. But we are here doing it now. Um, part One had some GP40-2LWs, um, which I so kindly swapped out for what we have in front of us, uh, some Canadian National F7s. Uh, we're going to pretend that they were refitted in uh, Prince George, I believe it is, um, with a bit of reference help from uh, Boosted Fridge on Railworks America. And the paints for the F7s themselves are by Buzz. I will go ahead and link those as well in case you're interested. But I've got a GP9 in the middle as well. Uh, anyway, let's get to it. This is train 599 and we got a little bit of work to do along the way. Uh, so let's get going. It says you're now ready to set off west, taking the Robson subdivision. And just so we're on the same page again, this is obviously Yellowhead Pass. I'm pretty sure I didn't mention that, but anyway, let's go. These paints for these F7s look amazing by the way um there were some older ones uh on the side as well but these uh i finally got cracking anyway let's go mix it up a little bit throw some extra stock on here which is nice i'm uh, gonna try and mix it up like we did with the uh grand trunk uh sds on the stream uh last week Not a terribly heavy train either. Uh, the two GP40, uh, two LWs would would be fairly similar to these, I guess. Uh, I think they had about 1750 a pop. Uh, the F7 units, and then the uh, the Jeep had like 19, I think. <clears throat> quote me on that let me check my numbers here I know it's something like that but anyway we should be okay on power here goes the Jasper inbound and plus with these engines you can get a nice view of the route and just the entire map in itself which you cannot do with the uh, the SDs and the um, GP 40s So I stand corrected. The uh, the nine had seventeen fifty. I said nineteen hundred. It's kind of a random number. <laughs> and the F seven. So I was I was up one fifty over each one. The F seven is actually fifteen. So we got three thousand. Plus, yeah, we got almost, almost 5,000 horsepower, so that's plenty. Should do the job. So we are continuing west 
In the series thus far, we went from Jasper to Red Pass, and it's relatively flat, pretty wide open. Uh, and of course, the farther west you get, uh, it gets a little more snaky uh, and start to follow the river. I think it's the Fraser River. Um, several bridges, you meet the, uh, the highway a couple of times, and you kind of butt up against the other subdivision. Uh, with the slightly steeper grades. And we've actually got work to do today. We're just not taking some cars for a ride on this one. Um, we've got a couple of set outs, I think two, maybe, maybe three. Here's the triangle here. I I thought this might have been like some other kind of short line or something that branched off. Um, but then I looked at the map IRL and it's actually like that. So I guess it's just a turn stock around. So I kind of got the idea from this, or borrowed, shall we say, it, it, it wasn't natural, uh, from Boosted Fridge on Railworks America. Uh, apparently a lot of these were kind of repainted and refitted in uh, Prince George off to the west. So I kind of thought we'd uh, throw some on here, you know, just to switch up the stock and, and throw a GP9 because he sent me some pictures as well. Um, which actually had a lash up that looked almost precisely like this. So. Something different. And of course again, the skins on these F7s look, uh, look pretty darn nice. I think, I think the red is more spot on than that old uh, GP9 back there from the RSC days. Um, that's, that's more of like a blood. I don't know, but uh, Buzz did a fantastic job with these. He's got some uh, Canadian National Heritage paints too I want to try out here soon on this very route. Good looking locos though slapped up in the zebra. Right, so we got a bit of a descent here. 
and then around a couple of bins we'll have the higher uh, grade subdivision up to our left and it's kind of a, like a rock face right up here looks really nice So we got a couple of cars. I need to need to pay attention to that. Just stop soaking in the view here. We got a couple of cars we got to drop off in about seven miles. ETA 10:05, so it's uh, about 15 minutes. If I can get the dynamics working on these old things. There we go. Now they're coming online. The river down there to our right. We got the other subdivision up there, just up there, you just can't see it. Here's the tunnel right here. Good God, oh, what a view. Eat your heart out, Alps. dynamics a tiny bit a little less down right here was 1.8 well now it's back up to 1 that caboose. I love the cabooses on this roof. Look really nice. And who doesn't like a caboose? Alright, five and a quarter. Let's see what we gotta do here. Drop it off. 471 through 684. So it looks like we're going to be dropping off two cars at that siding up here. It's going to be 661 and 416, which it says right there. 416, 661. Robson Trans Mountain Spur.
So it looks like the descent through here kind of varies steadily between 1 and 0.8. The uh, stream last week when we ran the uh, Grand Trunk skinned uh, Searchlight SD40 2, we were up on the higher sub. And the views up there are insanely pretty. Alright, you'll be dropping off the pipe loads at Robson Trans Mountain Spur. You'll be dropping your train off behind the loads on the main before dropping the pipes off on the siding. Right on. Alright, we got four miles. Dynamics a bit. A little bridge. And also, um, I don't know if you, if anyone noticed uh, the last video I had. Quite a bit of stuttering. It was insane. Um, and this this map is not performance heavy at all. And uh, on a whim, I decided to go into the uh, window settings and turn off the um, games enhancement mode or whatever it's called. And voila, it kind of smoothed out. Seems like that's the better option with some of the older games. Like I play OMSI as well, uh, the bus simulator, and I've noticed turning the game mode off for that actually um, improves the performance a bit. have an Intel processor so that could have something to do with it I'm not sure plus there was another Windows patch the other day as well so could all be anecdotal who knows the map runs very smoothly though Kind of gingerly working this dynamic brake. Trying to keep a decent speed. Another bridge. Alright, two and three quarters. I don't know if any kind of weird issues uh, will befall us since the two units that were originally in this scenario um, were obviously a bit shorter than the three that I've added, uh, only to make up for power, obviously. But we should be alright. Add a quick look at the map, look like uh, we should be able to get it done. Here's the highway off to the left. And 
And I don't know about these taillights working on this caboose. When I threw the uh, searchlight SDs on here, they didn't uh, want to light up. <clears throat> but of course, with the default stock, they, they lit up just fine. I couldn't believe about the route uh, with Jasper being such a large yard on the map uh, is why there was no kind of switching job. Um, you know, I'm sure it's a transfer point. Uh, hopefully somebody will come up with something or we'll see some kind of scenario pack here in the immediate future. Maybe there is, uh, I don't know, looking over the scenarios, because I obviously have not done all of them. Uh, this is the third scenario I've done. I don't think there's any switching jobs. Like yard, yard stuff anyway, not this local stuff. <clears throat> Alright, start putting the brakes on. a little too heavy handedly but it's an old model that's fine was the uh, whistleboard way back there. Alright, we'll creep up a little bit more. right there is as good as any <clears throat> right so we're keeping the two cars behind the engines and dropping off the rest Let's see six eight four 
four seven one six eight four. Yep. Mountain Spur, we're taking these two. Dropping some pipes. Alright, so just be on that lever there and we're going to push them back into place. sheds or something. I'm not sure what these are. Alright, so you now be picking your remaining train before heading west. switch back get the rest of our consist
right, we are on the cars. You're now ready to continue west. All right. Let's go. Say goodbye to our pipes. So the next task is go via Peterson Lane. <coughs> and then Veil Mountain, dropping some more off. again. sure why that was red, but okay. <clears throat> wow. Massive. Bald mountain bit. Is that a thing? Say bald mountain. Doesn't sound right. Views here do not disappoint. If we got some sort of extension continuing west, south, or east, I would not disapprove. <laughs> I'll be all over it. We are now about 
halfway through the entirety of the scenario. The distance isn't as long on this one, it's just that you've got a couple of things to do, obviously, whereas the first one was uh, Bell Mount to Red Pass, which is the lengthier bit. But that was a uh, straight shot. So they're both 80 minutes, and I think there's a part three uh, where it has you doing some, some work around a lumber yard or two. signal looks like. There there have been a few signal mishaps. I've seen uh, someone comment on Railworks America um, as far as some like indicating clear when they obviously should not be I'm not entirely sure how they work. Probably single-handedly one of my new favorite things to do on this route. <laughs> Just riding the caboose. Not entirely safe, but uh, fun nonetheless. Veilment uh, 18. Is it Veil Mount or Veilment? Had a guy comment and say I was saying the the yellow head wrong. It's Tijon or Tijon, not Tetejon. Swiftwater set out siding. Ah, never noticed that before. on this route is just insane. The use of the 3D and 2D trees placed at distance like that, it just it looks amazing. And 
I still have not really seen how this this whole area of this route looks in autumn or uh, winter. There is a nice uh, winter scenario with some sulfur. Also departs from Jasper. That's one I was trying to get worked out with the uh, Canadian National SD70. Um, but for some reason I couldn't quite get it working right. So I'm going to have to keep uh, working on that. And bring uh, another video with you know some different stock and try and keep it a little fresh. to go to BC in real life. That's definitely on the bucket list. Beautiful country. And I don't mean like it's a country, but you know, the land. Got a little dirt road down to the uh, river right here. That's pretty neat. Oh, where's the train? All right, there we go. This whole valley just looks amazing, though. For the 9,999th time. So we've actually leveled out a tiny bit. It's only 0.7. Notice the speed dropping. So I got the dynamics off. And I believe we got a crossing coming up.
it's a 1.0 again. And by the way, if you guys have any ideas on what to run around here, uh, you know, specific engine liveries, etc., please uh, put them in the comments. I'd like to hear it. I'm sure, I'm missing several things. I know some Govia would be fun. Uh, I know Buzz has got a uh, F7 painted um, Govia as, as well. I said go via, via. Go via. Uh, maybe some Canadian National Grand Trunk, of course. Um, maybe some Canadian National, listen to me. Canadian Pacific. I had some old steamers on this route, would be great. I'm not a massive steam fan, nor can I drive them worth a damn in this game, but still look amazing. Alright, so we kind of loop out here and head south, I believe, if I got my directions correct. And the speeds obviously pick up a little bit. Round right about the speeds uh, between Jasper and Red Pass. It's just that bit we just went through is, uh, you know, the slower bit, a little more twisty mountains. This signal is good. Yep, it's green. It's really odd that one signal uh, back there was red to get it approved. It didn't say anything about it in uh, any kind of scenario directions, obviously. Notice the track changes as well. Got some uh, concrete or cement sleepers. Go back and take a closer look, unless my eyes are deceiving me. Nope, they are not. All right, so we got wood here, concrete here.
and heavy grade. All right, go via Peterson, Maine, 3.8. GP9 smoking in the middle. Digging the uh, the concrete sleeper look. It looks nicer than the the older uh, wooden sleeper. Signal looks fine as well. And back to wooden ties. Peterson, Maine, dead ahead. I bet this route would even look fantastic with a, like a low fog bank as well, some mist.
Not the kindest of horn loops. Alright, you'll be dropping the four loaded tank cars off of Ailment Industrial Spur. You'll first be dropping your train off by the depot before taking the tank cars into the spur. Aye, aye. steady slight ever so slightly grayed out of this valley as well <laughs> it's been about 0.3 the whole time I think so kept the notch uh, at one for the entirety of uh, getting down here different than the east side of the map obviously it's what's great about this route it's got all kinds of different views well can't see shit out of that window but at least you can see out of the front unlike the uh, the stock that comes with the route <laughs> you're like a, a tiny porthole right in front of you Homesteads and whatnot, some inkling of civilization, unlike the uh, the mid part, houses and barns. It's a highway again. Well, several highways. There's the other sub over there. Whoop! Crazy camera. Look out! Right up there. insane and this is where it loops around I believe if I'm not mistaken I check here on the map yeah so if you were coming off this sub right here you would run down and then loop around and then come back up the uh, the one on the right Interesting uh, railroading area, this. Alright, Velvet Depot is in 4.3. We're back on uh, concrete ties again.
don't know if that's as epic as a, a double rainbow, though. I wonder how many of you will uh, catch on to that reference. Take a sneaky peek at it. All right, so it's way up there. And it's not letting me quite go, but ooh, that's a nice looking little area. Okay, cool. I didn't know there was another uh, kind of semi large civilization spot uh, like Jasper. I have to check that out. Check it out. Back to wooden sleepers. back up into a single line give it a little scooch all right so it looks like the same thing uh, drop off some cars then we take specific cars to the spur couple back up and then go to Cedar side sighting still got a little bit left to do Free cam around this little settlement a bit, though. There's a damn train station right there. excitement that just adds to the uh, passenger possibilities here.
Alright, so this is Veilment, or Veilmount, however you want to say it. Here's the station. It's a nice little building. Part of the town. Again, looks nice enough. Sticky keys pop up. Like a little uh, rental lodge or something right there. Oh, is that... Can I hear the water? Is that water I hear? I think it is. Nice. Very nice. This is a pretty damn big town. I didn't even realize this was on the route. Uh, I'm a bit shocked here. A little industry here. Wow. And it's, it's laid out pretty well. Downtown over here, I would assume. Got some tennis courts. Well, wow. Was not expecting this. I had no clue this was even here. That's all right. That is all right. What's this over here? Like a, a supermarket or something? Walmarts. Here's the old Veilment Diner. Steak, seafood, and spirits. I don't know if I'd get any seafood this far from the sea. That's just me, though. All right. Grab us a, a quick pick, real quick. There we go. Stop screwing around. Uh, let's see. We're going to kick 431 through 684. All right, helmet, industrial spur, half a mile. Let's look at the map real quick here. So it's just right back behind us there. All right, good deal. Good deal. Get down here for some action shots. Oh, please tell me they did not recouple. Please. It's like we got a damn Alco in the middle of these two F7s. Son of a bitch, it did recouple. Fuck. Nope. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, I hate when it does that. Now that's going to be a problem. That. That might be a problem. God. Really. 
really dislike when that happens. Alright, let's see if we can scoosh on by. Of course I got an X for that, you know. Like it's like it's my fault. <sighs> Alright, here we go. I'm gonna try not to ram it home. I'm gonna see if uh I'm gonna see if we can fit. Without derailing. That is pretty damn close. These are so, for some reason still making a noise like they're moving. <laughs> Never know what you're gonna get on a train cell. Please don't derail, please don't derail, please don't derail. Oh, it's gonna be tight. Ooh. Now the next issue I'm worried about is being able to recouple back to those cars sitting at the station. Got a slight downgrade into the spur. So it says you now pick up your train and continue to Cedar Side. Do not recouple, please. again. Pucker factor engaged.
All right, they have stopped squealing. Nice. Let's make sure we can uh, recouple. And the couples, coupler's disappearing. That's not good. Nope. Nope. Get all up in there. Ah! They rolled forward. Why did they roll forward? You'll now be ready to head to the final leg of the journey to Cedarside. You'll be stopping in the siding at Cedarside where this part of the scenario will end. You'll need to check the switch is lined into the siding for you. It is not. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Looks good to go. Good to go. All right. So that's the second signal. I had to get approved that was not noted in the scenario. So if you do get this route uh, and you play these scenarios, just make sure you're looking at those signals. All right, we got three miles to where we're gonna stop at Cedarside. And that'll be the end of part two.
hold on a minute. They went back. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. All right. There we go. Thank God I looked at the HUD. decent grade right here up in the cedar side one unexpected Coming in a little hot. Here we are, Cedar Side. Well, that was a nice little run down to the south end and some abstract power for the uh, game's route by default. Please try again. <laughs> I don't think so. That was good enough. I'm fine with it. It's not my fault the car is recoupled. But anyway, thanks for joining me and watching uh, Cedarside Turn Part 2. Uh, we'll come back with Cedarside Turn Part 3, the finale, um, with uh, likely some different power. But anyway, that's it for today. Take care of yourself, guys. We'll see you next time.